Our next caller is Rebecca from Texas. Hey, Rebecca, how can we help you? Hi. So um, I graduated high school this year, but I've struggled with like an eating disorder since I was like in seventh grade. And at this point now, I've been trying to like recover my period. Um, And I started lifting and found Mind Pump. And that's kind of helped me through my recovery process. I do work with a dietitian and a therapist. But um, from consuming your videos and other content, I've realized that like, chasing um, health and will help me in the long run. I've been doing MAPS Anabolic for like a while and I had DM'd you, Sal, like a while ago after I started doing performance and you had mentioned that doing um, MAPS Anabolic would be better for balancing my hormones. And so I went back to that, but I still really haven't seen any progress. Uh, I've been working on lowering my steps. So I was averaging about 25,000 a day ish and I've gotten down to 13,000 and I'm still trying to lower it from there. But I was wondering if y'all had any suggestions, if I should like cut down on exercises, sets or like, um, I thought maybe going down to two days a week, but like lifting has really helped me in my recovery process. So I'm kind of like stuck on what to do. Yeah. What, no. what are you doing? Mm-hmm. The the 25,000 steps. Are you just naturally getting to that campus walking around campus or something? What's that? Um, so I'm just naturally like, I like to move around a lot and also just being like anxious minded. Um, I do work with horses like five times a week, but that usually gets me like around 3000 steps. So, okay. First off, I want to commend you on your, your courage. It's really hard to talk about what you're talking about, especially on a, a podcast. You know, self-awareness. At this and point. yeah. And the fact that you're working with a dietitian and a therapist, you are on the right track. Now I know you're saying you're not seeing any progress. So I'm assuming you're talking about maybe physical progress or even just the progress with your period. But I'd like to ask you a couple other questions, Rebecca. Do you feel any different or has your relationship with your body and with exercise, has that changed? And do you feel any changes in your energy levels? Um, I have definitely felt better energy level wise. I know I should probably like increase the amount of food I intake, but like um, I'm still like struggling with the whole like guilt thing. But um, I was that person who used to do hit, but then it turned into more like while we, while I was resting, I was still like jogging in place. Mm. Um, and, um, I think my relationship with food has been a little bit better because now like y'all really encouraged me to like eat white rice because like I was afraid to do that. But then on the days I'd work out, I started consuming that. Cause I was like, Oh, this would be like, a quick um, absorbing carb or I can't think of the word, but like before like a workout and stuff like that. So Yeah. Okay. So you are progressing. You are doing a great job. Yeah. And I want you to, to, to understand a few things. Let's start with the physical. Okay. Let's just start with the physical body, which is different from the emotional and mental side, which is also something that you're working on. Because you have had a, a, a challenging relationship with food, for a while, it's going to take a little while for your body uh, to recognize what you're doing now as the new norm. Okay. So uh, th- there's a bit of a memory that's left over. You just got to be patient and allow things to work um, and do it very slowly. But I want you to focus on how you feel, how you view yourself, um, your energy levels, and your relationship to exercise and to nutrition. If those are improving, You are on the right track. And I'm going to tell you something, and I promise this is going to happen, Rebecca. If you keep moving in that direction and just focus on those things I just said, the physical will follow. It's a matter of time before the physical follows. But I want you to take your focus off of the physical. I don't even want you to, to, to care about that. Care about the most important things for now. That will drive your physical success, believe it or not, more then if you focused on the physical progress, uh, you know, type of goals. I, I have two suggestions. Um, do you have do you have the ability to extend your workout time, like as far as how long you're in the gym with MAPS Anabolic, or do you have a, a small window to work out? Uh, right now that it's in the summer, it seems like I have like quite a bit of flexibility. So I don't know what it will be like once I get off to college, but 
uh, for right now, it seems like I have a pretty flexible schedule. Okay. So one of the things you, you, I would more than likely, uh, even if you are falling anabolic and if you have a tendency to, you know, go fly through the workout, like maps hit, and then also work between sets, you probably even follow the, the rest period times and maps anabolic really closely or keep it moving along. And I would actually push you in the other direction where I'd say, you know, let's, let's have like some three minute rests yeah. in between mm -hmm. exercises and actually slow the the workout down where maybe it takes 90 minutes to get all the way through the full anabolic routine. And and that's what I would try and, and stretch that out. So that's one suggestion uh, that I, I would do with you. The other thing I would uh, see if you would be interested in and, and try and get you to do is maybe two, two times a week, if I can get you starting there with uh, yoga, you know, where you, yin yoga. Yes. It's very meditative. You're not trying to, you're not sweating in Bikram. You're not pushing real hard. It's just really, t I mean, if you say you're anxious, um, I, I just think, and we're also trying to cut back a little bit on the crazy steps all the time. I think doing something that's working inward more would be a, a really good idea. And sauna work would be fine too. So like, you know, I would, I would try and get you to, to schedule me two or three times a week where we're dedicating an hour to 90 minutes of something that's very slow. Restorative. Yeah, restorative yeah. and calming and uh, introspective. So I think like the sauna or jacuzzi or some hot cold plunge stuff or uh, yoga, I think would be uh, great yeah. to add to what you're doing. Yin yoga is a phenomenal recommendation. I can't recommend that enough for, for, for you. And it's going to be frustrating. So consider uh, this is for sure going to happen. You're going to go into a yin yoga class. And you're going to be frustrated because it's you slow. You want to do the power yoga version. Yeah, and they're making you sick yeah. and, you're, and, you're, and you're stuck with your thoughts. But that's exactly why it's so yeah. beneficial. And then with the long rest periods in between sets, try something like this. Um, is there something you can do in that three-minute period that's calming to you? So uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, Paul Check is a good friend of ours. He's a, I consider him to be the godfather of wellness. And he would have people paint... Oh, I or draw. It. We have yeah. a video on YouTube. Yeah, in between sets. Uh, so fascinating. Yeah, and, and that's because it's a very calming kind of meditative practice. Find something like that for yourself. It might be reading. It might be writing in your journal, something that has nothing to do with the workout. Something in between each set that is calming for you and focus on that. And I promise you, okay, I, I, I'm, this is 100%. If you do these things and you focus on the mental and emotional aspects of your health and you do those things consistently, the physical will follow. I promise you. If you focus on the physical right now, Rebecca, and push the physical to try and get results, you're not going to get either one of those things. So just, and I know right now you're, you're listening to me and you're like, okay, I know Sal said it, but I need you to trust what I'm saying. Give it a shot. Give it six months. Give it six months and watch what happens. You will you will blow yourself away at your body's potential if you do this the Can right I way. Can I ask where we are calorie wise right now? Where are we at calorie wise? Um, I think I'm around uh, two thousand five hundred. My dietitian won't give me specifics, but like I I am at like she says that I'm at a healthy weight for like she's actually kind of confused why I haven't gotten my period because she's like you're at a good weight, but she thinks I might have like more muscle mass than I realize, but of course I'm like, I'm not lifting like really heavy weight and like, I'm not super muscular. So, uh, I have been doing anabolic. I'm actually in the strength phase right now. So would you, you say just keep doing the strength phase for like six months? No, or? I mean, I, I would go from phase one to phase two. You can still do phase three, but I would, you can go back and forth between yeah, phase I would, one and two. I would cycle through the whole program, right? Go one, two, three, start over one, two, three, follow, follow it the way it is. The only suggestion I would do as far as changing it would be, like I said, is to stretch out the rest periods. Yeah. And, and, and consider this, okay, when it comes to, I know you're waiting for your period, it, it will eventually, uh, it should eventually happen. It takes time. Sometimes. But it, it's not just the, again, it's not just the physical. So your thoughts are real to your body. Your feelings are real to your body. So although physically you might check all the boxes, if you're still in that anxious state of mind, your body might not feel ready That's just right. yet. That's so, why the yoga thing I think is going to be. Yeah, so just good. just don't even. I would just slow down and do those uncomfortable. What's for you uncomfortable is going to be sitting still with your thoughts. So focus on that. Work on that. Yin yoga was such a great uh, a, a great recommendation. And by the way, and it, that was my recommendation. But I also there's uh, you know to kind of Sal's point with the the art thing. 
I, I actually, as a, as a coach, if you were my client, uh, I wouldn't mind you picking something that actually doesn't require the gym or isn't considered an exercise. Like if you just paint it for an hour or two, like if you have, I would try and find something, a hobby that you become very present in the moment and into, and it relaxes you and it gives you fulfillment and joy. And that could be anything. It could be comic books. It could be fishing. It could be painting. It could be doing archery, knitting, archery. I mean, yeah, it could, there's mm -hmm. a whole host of things that I, I would like to see you do. And I, I would, I would make you do that as a client. I would skip, make you schedule that in your week. And I just think that there'd be tremendous benefit from it. And yes, yoga is a, a good example. Now, Rebecca, I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide for free. And I don't want it to, uh, it's not going to replace anything that you're doing with your dietitian, but there are lots of segments in there that focus on improving your relationship to nutrition that I think you may benefit from. In fact, uh, I'm only going to send it to you under one condition. I want you to promise me that you'll show your dietitian before you read it because I do want to make sure that the, I get their clearance first. Will you promise me that if I send it to you? Yeah. I've actually talked about y'all a lot to her and she gets really excited every time I tell her information about what you say. So cool. she'll cool. be excited to see it. All right. So we'll send it over to you before you read it. Send it to your dietitian. Say, hey, you know, the guys at Mind Pump sent this to me, but they would like your approval before I go through it. Send it to that, sir, her or him. Have them take a look at it. And then if they say it's all good, then then take a look. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for calling, Rebecca. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, you know, stuff like that really warms me because oh, I, I, I've worked with people like this, and especially at this age, really hard to come out of. Got to love, though, that her, at her age to have the awareness and and for her to be already aware, reached out, have professionals that are helping her, yep. listening to Mind Pump at that. I mean, for sure, she represents a very small percentage. Of, we don't have a lot of people, you know, under the age of 20 listening. I mean, we're definitely... 25 and above for most mm -hmm. most people listening to the show. So I always get excited when I hear a younger person that's into the show and then someone who's been challenged as much as she has with like an eating disorder since seventh grade. Right. And that's, you know, to her period question, like, you know, even though she's got her nutritionist knows she's got everything right. If she's been struggling with this since seventh grade, it takes a while sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to your point, she also still could be causing internal stress because she's still anxious and she's still worried, yes. and she's, mm -hmm. which I, I love the idea. And it doesn't have to be yoga, although I think I, yoga was a, a good recommendation. It could be anything that just relaxes her and calms her down. Yeah, and, and it's, um, it is um, it is a very big deal uh, what she's doing. So I, I hope she listens to this, this podcast and, and what we're saying afterwards because stick to it. You're doing the right thing. And on the other end of this is tremendous personal growth. In fact, the best coaches and trainers I've ever worked with in my entire life, the ones that I learned from started here. They started here, they got through it. And on the other end of it, they became tremendously effective at their jobs because they understood things from a, an angle that most of us will never get to.